Welcome to that one Goosewalls podcast. <laughs> so happy Easter, everyone. I'll be rushing this stupid video out the door as fast as I can so it can be on Easter. So thank you for suffering with me. So today we're going to be talking about egg monsters from Mars. Uh, uh, the first book I ever saw of Goosebumps for cover wise. And we're doing this on Easter because we had to scramble. <laughs> Bad puns. All right, I'm going to have to make an egg pun counter now. There we go. Yes. And proceeded to not do that. Ha <laughs> ha. That was excellent. Ha ha ha. Direct. Oh, Let's man. get cracking on this video. Ah! Okay, shut up, Josh. <laughs> no, 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 that works. Um, Austin, do you want to tell us a bit about this book? Well, yeah. So in a nutshell, without giving too much away, um, this kid named Dana is really jealous of his sister. Uh, his sister basically always gets what she wants. And... His, his dad is the type that records everything, so she has to do an egg hunt for her birthday uh, one year, I think for her 10th birthday. And while Dana's outside, he finds this veiny egg outside. <laughs> it doesn't look like a normal egg since they were using raw eggs. And the moment Dana finds this egg, it sends him down this whirlwind <clears throat> rabbit hole of an adventure. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole! And um, he... He meets this doctor that tells him he needs to keep the eggs cold. And uh, unfortunately, the eggs hatch. And later on in the story, um, Dana gets affected by these eggs. And he ends up, I don't want to spoil the ending, but yeah, he, you know, makes you think at He's the end. Uh, does Dana become an alien himself or something? So... Well, I might as well just spoil it because I mean no one that watches well, okay, my he podcast lays an egg. like he lays an egg out of his butt in, in the middle of the grass <clears> outside. I mean, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Josh. So, go ahead. First off, I'll make one thing clear: this is one of the four or five worst twists in Goosebumps history. Yeah. Just no, no. That's so gross and so like it just had bad implications on the head. But, um, body horror. in terms of egg monsters from Mars, I should point one thing out. R.L. Stein apparently really liked writing this one because he, it was like one of those like two scene stories. He basically wrote how it ended up like all in two feet. But notice how like, which benefited the pacing. It felt like the pacing of this book was really good. Mm -hmm. It was really tight pacing. Yeah, for sure. I think the think content itself, I think there was a couple good pointers there. Like, I think it felt like the aspect of being really gross and, like, boozy with the eggs. I mean, when he had to, like, try and put all the scrambled eggs, basically, for these monsters into, like, a uh, garbage compactor. Hilarious. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Tell but us a bit about your thoughts on the other, book. Otherwise, oh, I'm kind of left a little flat with this one. I mean, the whole mad scientist thing was okay, but like, didn't feel like, even though we have this twist and we have what happened with the scientists, we didn't learn that much about the egg monsters. It doesn't really feel like, besides being a bit nasty, they really did anything. They well, raped! Something's a bit off about this book. I mean, there's a lot of like good beats to it, but there's a few things that have been off. The rape scene is what was off. Fuck. Oh, oh that or what? Dude. <laughs> well, they blanketed yeah. him, you know, like an omelet. They folded themselves over him and kept him warm. And while he was asleep, oh, yeah, they yeah, worked yeah, his yeah, way into yeah, his yeah. asshole. Right. Wait a minute. Hold up. Rape trade see from the Evil Dead. Non consensual, but this wasn't violent. This was like they fucked yeah. him gently. It was just trying to do weird and really thinking <laughs> things. They wanted to shove the egg yolk up the butt. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'd say the story was over easy. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> soft boiled, if you will. We're going to have to put this in the video. Oh, now. Sunny Side. Yeah. Uh, 
A little soft boy. Like, this looks not bad, but it's wonky and very inconsistent. <clears throat> Just, I think, like, the whole two-scene shot thing works really well, but... We don't learn anything about the egg monsters, and besides one part, they don't really, like, do anything. I think the fact that Dana, there was actually stakes, you're like, oh, this kid might freeze death and die. That's good, just... I mean, yeah, I'd had a legitimate kidnapping. Okay, legitimately, as a kid, I thought I was like, oh my god, it's a better, like, this is like one of the best twists, but that's because this was like my second Goosebumps book right after St. Cheese and Die Again, so. Reality is, it's one of the laziest and poorly thought out twists. <laughs> Wasaki, why don't you tell us a few thoughts on the book? Uh, I really liked it. It was okay, I guess. Um, my, I guess my, my theory would be is Tara, is Tara the Terrible and um, his sister and Dana's sister related at some point. Because I got major like Tara the Terrible vibes from her in the yeah. spoiled department. Maybe they just recycled the character. Maybe. Okay, to be fair, Goosebumps tends to recycle a lot of character archetypes. But Dalton said. I was going to say... um, <gasps> oh, kitty cat. Was, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> this is Albert the Goosebumps Cat. Hello, Albert yeah. the Goosebumps Cat. Hello, Albert the Goosebumps Cat. Oh, he's named after right. Albert Einstein, but he's not that smart. Oh, so now he's just oh. Albert, he's <laughs> Carl Stein smart? <laughs> okay, can I just say something? Oh, he's beautiful. Did someone hurt Arl Stein on Easter? I need to know. Because <laughs> right before Egg Monsters from Mars was bad air day, and both books... Back to back have trash twists. Josh? Yeah, I do. Did, did trash anybody, twists. Is, is there something yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like it, about it Easter? It suffered the book in a, in a harsh light for me. <laughs> it could have <clears> been <throat> way darker because, you know, there's, there's, there's you know, some of the points about artificial insemination and Rape. Kind of John Carpenter's the, the thing. <laughs> but, you know, this, this book had its overtones and undertones in it, but that ending just dumb, dumb down the entire story. Yeah, because it could have easily been had, like, really interesting monsters here. Like, I want to know more about their origins. Uh, focusing on, like, like the science lab and, like, the evils of science. Like, if this makes sense, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of great parts to it. And it had a lot of great ideas going for it. I feel like it could have been better. When you really get down to it, like, it just... The moment we got towards the end and we were sticking around the scientist lab for a long time, some of the weaknesses of this book started to show up. I mean... I don't know. I like... I mean... I, I, I just wish it was a little better. Yes, the twist is weak, but I feel like if they modified it a little bit, it could have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, this oh, it could have been. Did this easily have I mean, been the best. It definitely before. got. It definitely has like those like body horror vibes to it. All right, so <clears throat> I want to say overall, I think this book suffered from what a lot of books suffer from in this, the the time frame of which they came out. This is forty two. Yeah. Once we kind of started hitting those, like, 40s and, you know, early 50s, we started to feel the rush, because he was shitting out a book every month, or every couple well, months. Well, I think it's 96. Yeah, we were working on three different series at the time as well. Yeah, so you had so many books coming out from him that I think he just spread himself too thin. And like everyone says, yeah. yes, there really isn't a monster presence, but you know what is funny and interesting about this? Um... <clears throat> Towards the death of Goosebumps and the end of it, they tried to like kind of reshoot shoot the mascots. Like you know, we had Slappy, the Mummy, oh, Cuddles. Yeah. The second group was the Beast from the East, the Egg Monster from Mars. There was a couple others, and there's some uh, there's some material out there like a puzzle and some sticker sheets and stuff. But they were trying to give I him think... more of a life. I would say he is the Cuddles of his group of monsters. Not yeah, terrible, yeah. but not amazing. Fresh ideas, but the landings didn't quite stick. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's let's roll into a rating system here. Uh, let's start with Brandon since it's Easter and it's his uh, podcast. What are you gonna rate this bitch? So I know this is gonna be kind of controversial, but I'm gonna give it a seven. Alrighty, uh, I think that's controversial. Irby, <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's a few things that shine through enough. I'm giving this one a six out of ten. Okay, it's fair. Austin. 
I would say, though the ending was kind of disappointing, I think there's huge potential with this book, and I enjoyed the humor, and I enjoyed the, the nods to pop culture within this book. Real, really great pace to it. A lot of fun to be had. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. <clears throat> okay, 7.5. Oh, yeah. Wasaki! I'm going to go 5 out of 10. I, it was okay, it's just not that great of a book. Alright, I mean... <laughs> and the ending was shit, so... You mean he shit out an egg? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun. Um, <laughs> I want to say overall, I think Arl Stein just happened to poach this one. Another egg pun, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. I'm actually with Josh and Brandon here. I'm going to meet you in the middle. Uh, 5.5. It was not okay. the most amazing Goosebumps book. And like Irby said, there was not enough detail on the monster. You know, <clears throat> besides them all hatching and hugging Dana and then, you know, giving him the uh, one, two fingeroo. The book just exactly. didn't really encapsulate me. <clears throat> Let me average it real oh, quick. And, uh, nice. we'll... There are points left on the board. Let me average it. So, this book scored a whopping 6.25. I think that's pretty fair for this book. Barely average. 60, uh, 62, okay. <laughs> why not 69? Not, not, not even close. Thinking about the plot, though, I can definitely see why this was never made into an episode. I don't yeah, know it'd, be would be, it'd be like a case of deep trouble. No, they could have just reused the blob yeah. monster, though, and have it be the egg. Cover it with some slime. <laughs> Alright, no. yeah. happy Easter to all. Yeah, happy What's Easter. our next happy episode, Easter. guys? Say cheese and die. Okay, so we actually are back on track with that. Yep. Yep. We had to stop the entire that. fucking route to do that. So, who gets to pick after that, since we already picked that? Um, me. I don't think I'm Irby yet. What do you pick in Irby yeah. so I can work on the thumbnail, because I'm a busy boy? You know what? What am I picking? Too many average and good books. I want to tear Arl's side a new one. <laughs> We're doing one of the worst books in Goosebumps. Hot take. Go eat worms. All right, I'll make it. Okay. Yes, one of the worst ones, yes. All right, uh, channel yeah. announcements before uh, I get cancer and disappear to the 12th dimension. All right. For being around well, Brandon. I'll be moving out in June. Uh, then I'll have a lot more time to film. I uh, I am involved on in our upcoming collab, though. Oh. Uh, <laughs> was- great collab. Wasaki, give us some... Give us a channel update, but do it in Japanese only. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that much Japanese, but I can try. I can give you a little bit. Let's try. That's fine. Just tell us. Do it. Okay. I'm um, having a video coming out of the origins of Josh Wysock. We're going to fight for the whole breed. We're going to finally meet all for the Josh Wysock fans. We're going to finally meet his mom, who she is. And then for uh, <laughs> other stuff, I'm doing uh, an uh, anime video about... Uh, my top Mom. 10, 15, alien slash robotic life moves. Mom, where are you? <laughs> they got me captured. <laughs> Brandon, channel okay. update, I guess. Uh, so, uh, Steel Times 2 review is coming up. And get this, it's not a troll. Literally, <clears throat> Mr. Poopyhead that was recording this video didn't understand that was an April Fool's joke. Right, so yeah, um, I'm making a Steel Times 2 review. Uh, you should watch it, Jay. It was April Fool's, what you expect? Austin, channel update. I am about to put out some book reviews, do a couple of talk videos, and then I'm going to do a werewolf review a thon in Goosebumps. Trying to hear myself for the number of time. So, that will be fun. Okay. It will be. Uh, my, only, my only update to you motherfuckers is I am Goosebumps. So, with that being said, uh, Bumps in the night's motherfucking out. 20 videos coming your way. Happy Easter. Alright, from that one Goosebumps podcast, happy Easter, and have yourself a great night. See ya.